Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I am filming yet another sort of like spur of the moment type vlog because the past two days it has been extremely windy. And I mean that, like 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts. And today my dad actually called me and I had been thinking about this beforehand. He was like, you know, I was driving by the lake and the waves crashing up against some of the rocks that they put there to, you know, make it so waves don't splash up on the road. They're looking pretty strong, right? So gave me the idea and kind of reminded me again that maybe before this wind goes away at pretty much, I think today, after today, it should kind of settle down a little bit, which I'm really hopeful for because when it gets really windy like this, it's just really annoying listening to it all the time. And then you got to worry about everything blowing away. Just the other day when I was driving this truck, a garbage can blew uh, across the road and hit my truck while I was driving. It was in the right lane. I had to get into the left lane to dodge it. And of course, as soon as I pull into the left lane to drive around it, the wind picks up, blows into the truck, right? So a lot of power outages and things like that, a lot of annoyances. But there is one good thing to come about it, and that is some pretty amazing photographic opportunities. I thought I'd want to go to my main sort of local haunt, which is Evangola State Park, but I figured if I had a little farther south, uh, we can go to the Cataraugus Creek Harbor here, where there is a really impressive break wall, just uh, where my, my finger is here shot some b-roll of it a moment ago where you saw like a really huge wave crash right over the end of it and uh, I figured this would be a better spot and just oh my god there's a huge wave that just crashed right over that literally right over the whole entire thing and yeah that's just a perfect example why I figured coming here would be a better idea and just another one just now and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna suck walking out there with the camera but I think it'll be worth it to grab some nice photos of these really huge waves as they just come right off the lake and just, bam, crash right in to this break wall right here at the mouth of the Cataraugus Creek. And uh, they're, they're crashing at, like, the perfect direction, and the clouds are moving across the lake at a really nice speed, too. So, yeah, I also wanted to film this part here in the truck first because I don't think I'll be able to do much vlogging once we get out there, maybe, uh, maybe I will. Don't, don't count on it though. Hopefully the, uh, little dead cat on this will, uh, do a good enough job to kind of silence these, these winds. But I mean, they are powerful. We're talking at points 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts. Uh, I don't know if it, if it's worse today than it was yesterday. It seems kind of about the same. So whatever that means, I guess, is, you know, is what it is. But I'm going to just set up my camera. I'm probably going to be handheld for a lot of these shots just because I'll want a really high shutter speed anyways to freeze the motion of the wave. And it is 4 o'clock, so the sun sets in about an hour. So we still got a decent chunk of daylight here to work with. So we should be able to shoot around maybe ISO 800 to 1,000, maybe up to 1250 F8, and uh, just really try to get that shutter speed up as high as we possibly can and try to capture these waves. And I think a black and white will do a lot of these photos justice as opposed to just color. Um, yeah, there's some really nice waves that just keep crashing over those walls. So I'm going to stop sitting here, and I'm going to get out there and we're gonna try to capture some waves here on this very, very windy day here on Lake Erie. So as I go ahead and make the short walk up to the beach where we're gonna be shooting some waves, I wanna do a quick little voiceover talking about a few things. First, a little bit about the area, and secondly, what my game plan and thought process is going into a shoot like this, given that I never photographed waves before. So first, the area, this is Cataraugus Creek Harbor, an area we've been to before. I think I shot a vlog here a long time ago, maybe almost a year ago, coming up on a year, and I've got a couple photos that I've taken here that I really, really like, one being Relic and the other being Allure of the Lake. And both those photos kind of showcase some of my favorite things about the area. The driftwood here, as you can see up there on the right, that is the log that is in the photo Relic, and the break wall, which is featured in Allure of the Lake, which we're 
going to right now. We're obviously not going to be walking out on it today just because how treacherous the conditions are. But, you know, it's one of my favorite things about the area. And you can see this is just kind of what it looks like as you walk out. Really nice sandy trail here and these beautiful golden grasses. I don't know what what they're called, what species they are, but they just look absolutely fantastic in the fall and the winter as they turn a really, really awesome color. And of course, you've got a great view of the horizon for sunset. So a lot going here for the small little area. But my game plan, my thought process today is to not photograph the waves as they're just rolling in, right? Because we could do that anywhere we have access to a beach. And I don't think the waves look good as they're kind of rolling towards you because you're kind of missing out on the profile of a wave, which is this really nice arcing, rolling feature that you're not getting as it's coming directly at you. So instead, my goal is to photograph the waves as they crash into the break wall. And, you know, this is where the high wind speeds come in because as they crash into the break wall, it sends up this huge spray that goes really high into the air and you pair that with the wind and it carries that spray really, really far. And we're hoping to see it create some really interesting shapes and patterns and textures and what have you. And that's basically the goal. So I'm just walking out onto the beach with my 24 to 200 lens cropping it all the way to 200 millimeters and just taking tons of photos and see what we can get. Okay, so I don't know how well you can hear me, but I've been shooting a lot of photos up here on the left side of the pier. You might've been able to see me in the uh, B-roll I just filmed. It's really windy, <laughs> really, really there's some rain, some kind of hail coming down too, I'm trying to keep the lens dry at 200 millimeters. And I'm underexposing these shots by a stop just so I can get a little bit of a faster shutter speed because I don't think the, uh, the raw files are gonna have a hard time, you know, bringing up those shadows. They're usually pretty good with that. Protects the highlights too. And again, gives me a little bit of a faster shutter speed of about one over 500. I'll kind of throw up a couple random photos real quick just so you guys can see. And like I said, this is probably going to be very short in the field segment and we'll go over how I edit these in the studio later. I'm trying to film a little bit here and I want to go over a few things just talking about the importance of noticing foreshortening I started out closer to the break wall with some of these photos and it does look pretty good but it can be better and it's one thing you kind of have to pay attention to when you're in a situation like this to not get so fixed on one spot try to move around and see how it changes the scene because when I'm really close to the break wall, the waves are all kind of bunched together and compressed. But I found that once I moved down the beach a little bit, away from the break wall, the waves and the rocks within the break wall, they start to separate a little bit. And we can even see behind the break wall where it arcs and the waves that come up over top of it to kind of add more interest into the shot. So I've been moving down the beach little by little and seeing how it's changing the composition. And I think the farther down I go, the better I like the shot. So you kind of got to pay attention to parallax and foreshortening when you're out shooting things like this, because if you don't think about it in the field, which it's very easy to forget about and overlook, you know, you could kind of walk away with a worse image than you could have gotten had you moved 10, 15 feet to your left or right. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and continue to stick around a little bit longer. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of miserable being out here shooting in these conditions, 
but it's fun and I'm excited to see how these photos look when we get back into the studio. Roughly 800 and some odd photos later, I was finally done and ready to leave and look what I found on the beach. Yeah, some like survival hatchet had washed up on the beach and didn't really know what to make of it. I didn't want to take it home with me, so I just left it under some driftwood for somebody else to find at some point in the future. Welcome back to the studio, everybody. Very, very excited to finally go over some of the amazing shots we got yesterday. And not only that, but to show you guys kind of how I would process photos like these. Now, the weather today has calmed down drastically from what it was the past two days. You know, we had winds up to 60 to 70 miles an hour the past two days. And today, still a little windy, but nothing close to what we had yesterday. And that means, you know, yesterday was like the last day that we had a chance to photograph these types of conditions. And who knows when the next windstorm will be. Hopefully not for a little while, but, you know, when it does come around, I know what I'll be doing now in terms of photography, so long as it's safe to get out there and do so, obviously. But one thing for me personally as a photographer and then we'll go into the photos and the processing. I've spent a lot of time last year photographing the lake with beautiful, colorful sunsets and sort of calm conditions. And I really haven't had the opportunity to photograph the other side of the lake, if you know what I mean. Not literally geographically the other side, but more so emotionally the other side of the lake. You have the really beautiful, calm side, and then you have the absolutely angry and just rage filled version of the lake where you get these incredible waves and they cause damage high winds turbulent looking skies etc etc and this was that opportunity to capture the lake in that light and i'm really glad i got the opportunity to for a long time i've been somebody who focuses more so on like epic sunrises and sunsets and the colors that go with them but i've been really trying to make a shift at trying to photograph more moody things when the weather conditions aren't great they're more so like miserable rainy foggy misty windy right and i've been having a lot of fun doing that just because it's the other side of the spectrum and it just brings out photos that have completely different feelings and emotions attached to them and it's been a blast and I think it's going to add nicely to my portfolio, to my photos in general, and my seascapes on my website and stuff like that. And it's something I'm just really happy to have in my, so to speak, arsenal, if you will. So I ended up taking 847 photos and I ended up selecting about 164 because I was just taking rapid fighter shots. I had the camera set to continuous and it was just firing off shot after shot as waves would come in hoping that they would make some really cool shapes and patterns and I could freeze them as they crashed over the wall. Now, the first 18 photos or so are from when I was a little bit closer to the break wall and the rest are when I moved down the beach a little bit to try to take the break wall from being something like this and kind of make it more like this where you could see more details in the rocks and the waves would kind of be separated uh, because they weren't kind of like stacked on top of each other because of parallax and foreshortening, etc. But a few of the photos that I took when I was close to the wall actually did look pretty nice. And this is one of them here. Now, this one I did a black and white treatment on. I think all of these photos, in my opinion, look best as a black and white. Could you edit them in color? Sure, you absolutely could. But I think... It just looks so much better in black and white just because it just adds to that emotion and that depth in the photo and really helps to focus on the the texture and the shapes, right? And helps them have just more uh, of a dominance and more of a focus in the frame. Like the spray here in this shot 
is just way more noticeable in black and white than it is in color. Now, granted, this one I haven't edited a little bit, and I did have to underexpose them, but you can just kind of see in general where we edit them in such a way where we take out as much gray as possible, and you're left with just really high contrasty photos, and they just look amazing. I really don't know how to describe it. They just look really, really great in this treatment. So I'm actually going to edit a photo really quickly, one that um, I haven't touched at all yet, just to show you guys kind of how I'd go about editing a photo like this here just in Lightroom. And which one I pick here really doesn't make too big of a difference. But we'll go with this one just because you have these rocks here that kind of break up some waves. And I think it adds a little bit more depth to the photo where instead if you just had something like this where you kind of lose the break wall completely, right? It still looks great, don't get me wrong, but I think one of these just has, like this shot here, just has a little bit better separation. You can see the break wall lead out into the distance a little bit more, and again, you still have some great spray there from where the waves ended up actually crashing into the break wall itself. So first things first, I'm just going to go switch it to black and white, and I'm not going to do the auto. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and brighten it up about, I would say about 0.75 there. Now, Lightroom has been doing this weird thing lately where... If you reset a certain slider, like saturation is already set to minus 2 for some reason, and this is just already at, at plus 20. I don't know if it's a bug. It probably is. But normally, I don't go crazy on contrast in normal landscape photos that aren't black and white just because if I'm going to add contrast to a photo, I'll do it in Photoshop with like Pro Contrast or add contrast specifically in the highlights, midtones, or the shadows. Very rarely do I do global contrast, if at all, it's like 10 to 15 on the slider, and that is it. But with the black and white, you really have the freedom and the license to kind of push the contrast slider a little bit more. And obviously, to each their own, but I personally prefer don't mind pushing the contrast slider up to 25, even to 50. And uh, I think if I go to about 40 there, I think that looks fine. And then the highlights, right, normally I'd want to bring those down in a standard shot. But I really want to create good separation between the white water and sort of the calm water. I don't really know how you'd refer to this type of water versus this water, right? But you get what I mean. So to make that separation a little bit better, I'd probably bring the highlights up, whereas normally we'd want to bring them down. But you can see when you bring them down, you kind of lose a little bit of that punchiness that they have. Now the shadows, I'd probably leave the shadows where they are. You could maybe bring them down a little bit to darken some of those areas. But then for the whites, I'd bring the whites up just a little bit there and then bring the blacks down uh, to 25 or so. And then I'd crank the dehaze just a tad, maybe going up to about 20 or so. And there you can see with a short little bit of editing there, we're able to take the photo from this to this. And I think this looks a lot better. And it just has a more punchy, contrasty feel to it. Much more moody vibe than per se a color treatment would. Yeah, very, very simple editing there. You don't have to do much to these. Again, you could bring up the shadows just a tad if you want. Or you could get really contrasty and bring them down a whole lot. I personally would probably leave them untouched or maybe bring them up maybe about by 15 if I'm being honest. Now, this was shot at ISO 2500. I kind of underestimated what ISO I would need to be at, but I didn't want any camera shake since I was going to be shooting handheld at 200 millimeters. Now, I think a good rule of thumb is if whatever your millimeter you're shooting at, your shutter speed should be at least double that. So if you're shooting at 200 millimeters, you should be shooting at 1 over 400 400, 1 over 800, et cetera, et cetera. So right here, I was 1 over 800 at F8, 200 millimeters at ISO 2500. And uh, the Nikon Z7 doesn't do terrible at high ISO. Like this is a level of noise that I think for a shot like this doesn't really kill the photo. And you could even go so far as obviously do a little bit of noise reduction here. And I'd probably maybe crank it up to maybe like 52, maybe 60. But the one thing with the noise reduction that you do have to be careful about is that it will um, kind of wipe away some detail. If you're not careful enough, you can see this is before 
and this is after a majority of the noise here is in the sky at least that's going to be noticeable i would normally do noise reduction in photoshop with nick collection but if you don't have that obviously you can just do lightroom uh does a pretty decent job and then i would sharpen on top of the noise reduction layer because i don't want to like sharpen noise then denoise it because you're just like undoing your sharpening layer and there's now more noise i guess because it gets enhanced by the high pass filter but that's neither here nor there that's just photoshop talk but yeah that's basically in a nutshell how i would process one of these photos now i want to show you guys my absolute favorite my absolute top of the top photo that i ended up grabbing while we were out and this isn't the final version but this is what the edits look like in lightroom and as you can see here this is from when i was moved down the beach a little bit and while the waves aren't super dramatic on this side behind the break wall we had a huge wave hit and created a bunch of spray now on top of that we did get a couple seagulls uh, kind of hanging out here because for some reason these absolute psychotic birds love to just glide through the air on days like this where you got like 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts they're just hanging out just seems like they're doing it for fun honestly which is really cool but this wave here takes on almost like an animalistic form it looks like a like a, a serpent or some kind of dragon um as it just comes up out of this wave and just takes on a completely different shape and that's the one thing that i was kind of hoping that i would see in these waves kind of like a rorschach test if you will um you get all these random waves crashing creating all these different sprays and different textures and shapes and i was kind of hoping one of them would kind of take on uh you know some kind of recognizable form and we ended up getting one which is kind of crazy to think about um, and then I ended up taking this one into Photoshop and fully editing it um, to look like this here. And as you can see, you know, made a few slight tweaks in Photoshop. I adjusted some midtones, highlights, and shadow values, and then did some noise reduction and sharpening and added a signature. I also did a little dodging and burning in the white water in the bottom part of the photo. After some of the tweaks that I did, I felt like they were a little blown out and some of the darker areas were getting lost. So I actually went in and dodged uh, or burned rather some of those areas to darken them to bring out that detail again because i felt like i maybe went a little too far in lightroom and lost some of that detail that's another tip too i would give for just black and white photos in general is take advantage of dodging and burning because it can help you bring up some areas without having to like necessarily push other values right you can kind of selectively make things brighter or selectively make them darker wherever you want uh, with this just stroke of a mouse or a stylus and ended up getting some other photos here i haven't fully edited these but uh, this one i took back on my way back as i was leaving um, and had to crop in quite a bit on this one this is the before uh, and the after just fully uh, with a crop too and this is another one as well i think this one i cropped in a little bit a little bit off the top and the bottom uh, before and after this one i decided to leave as color just because i like the way the red light looks here on the very very end i just wish the waves were a little bit better more so like kind of like this one is but the light was not on when the wave crashed over here and uh there's that piece of driftwood too which i might do something with i kind of wish i would have done like a long exposure but this still looks kind of cool i'm not gonna lie but yeah uh i'm probably still gonna go through some of these like this one or maybe this one and edit them throw them up on my website just because they're just nice like different variants there's so many opportunities here uh with these photos to pull out something that i like and yeah i'll probably over the next couple days just go through and you know edit some more of these post some more of them this one i had a nice uh nice shot of a seagull there i believe and it's kind of a backlit sort of by the wave behind it which looks really, really epic. I, I kind of wish I had a little bit of a longer lens, but the 200 millimeter kind of got the job done. I kind of figured maybe I'd have to do some cropping on some of the photos, which wouldn't be the end of the world. And uh, I was definitely right in thinking that. But you could see how maybe having a little bit of a longer lens uh, would kind of do some of these photos justice. And I did have to end up going up to ISO 3200 towards the end of the, end of the shoot because it was getting darker and obviously you know you got to kind of crank the iso up a little bit at that point but yeah 
that is going to wrap up this vlog. Very short, impromptu, spur of the moment, but that's kind of how I like doing these. Uh, I definitely learned something. I know that uh, next time it's super windy, I'm going to get out and try to shoot some seascapes like this, and I highly recommend you guys try and do the same if you have access to a large body of water. If you live near the Great Lakes, you kind of luck out. If you don't, well, maybe try to figure something else out. I don't know. There's always opportunities to be had in all sorts of different weather conditions, whether they're great or they're miserable, right? And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you guys on the next adventure.